Hi guys, and welcome to this Raider Academy Dota 2 guide to warding as the Radiant. I am Cinderin from Mouseports, and I'm going to take you through the map showing you a lot of useful spawns, or spots, sorry, that you can ward when you're playing as Radiant. This guide will mainly be focused on how you ward to get vision, rather than how you ward to block the spawns. Uh, which is obviously something wards can be used for, but in this one I'm going to focus on how you ward in order to gain and maintain map control. We're going to start around the top lane. If, uh, if, we're, play if we're playing a 3 versus 3 scenario in the top lane, there are a couple of wards that are really crucial. The first one would be this one, which is a good option to give yourself lane control by seeing where the enemy supports are if they're playing in the jungle. This disallows them from taking you by surprise, and keeps your lane safe. Alternatively, this one provides the same purpose. There are two other wards I want to show in the top lane for now. The first one will be this one, which is going to be really useful, especially if it's a solo hero playing up top for the enemy and you want to lock him down. You will get lots of vision around the tower and in the lane, so it's going to be hard for him to hide. This will make it a lot easier for you to see teleports coming in, because you see the area around the tower, and thus if you get a kill you can easier siege and prepare for advancing on the map. The same logic applies for this ward, which you place which you place behind the tower, excuse me. And this will give you vision again of the town the town portals coming in. And give you vision also down to the pole. If you haven't blocked this, that could be useful as well to see them pulling and maybe go and contest the pole. We're gonna move down the map now. Let's go to the top rune. Uh, obviously you want to cover the top rune, but one thing you need to always keep in mind, regardless of where you're warding in the game, is that the enemy will always look to counter your wards as best as possible. So you need to you need to vary how you ward in the game, so you don't do the same things all the time, because you get too predictable. There are a multitude of, uh, of wards you can place to guard the top rune. One would be this one. This is good because it doesn't get countered that often, because it's not as useful as the others, since it only sees this area and not really into the jungle. The more common ones would be one up this cliff, which sees the rune and sees into the enemy jungle up here, as you can see. Alternatively, this one is good as well. Gives a little bit of vision around the side here and goes to see the rune here. Also gives vision of this camp. Alternatively, the one on the slope here. Kind of the same purpose, sees a little bit across and then sees the rune. And finally, the more aggressive one would be one up here, which sees to the rune and also gives uphill vision on the enemy hill. Those are the most common ones you can place there. Now moving into the mid lane, especially around night time, it's going to be very important to have vision around the enemy's top hill here, because gangs will often be coming in the mid lane around that time. The most common ones would be ones placed on the enemy side up here, on your own side up here, or on your own side up here. The good thing about these wards is if they give lots of vision on the enemy hill, so you see the movement coming in, especially if you manage to get them aggressively on the enemy's side, but this one is easier to guard because it's on your side. Now, what's usually going to happen is if the enemy suspects you have a mid ward, they will often place a sentry ward here or here, somewhere around the mid lane, because, as you can imagine, that covers all these four wards, as well as this one if it's placed here. So alternatively, if you're really looking to get mid vision, but you're afraid of the counter wards, you can place one here, for example, which will not get spotted by this ward, or alternatively, perhaps one up here or over here which still gives the uphill vision. Heading down toward the bottom rune, same logic as the top rune, vary your warding so you don't get countered all the time. This one will see across to here while covering the rune. This one gives more area around the rune, but is often going to get countered, same as this one. And finally, the aggressive one would be this one, which also sees the rune for you, but gives vision up the lane in mid which makes it harder for the enemy to come down and take you by surprise, but they will often get countered, so try to vary your warding positions in this area. There are two alternatives to this one. If you just want to see the rune, you can also place one here. This will block your spawn here, however, so you need to be careful with using that as radiant. This sees the rune, and finally this one will also see the rune while giving you vision in your jungle. Yes. That can be very useful if you're playing against a tri lane down in the bottom lane, because you get to see them in the jungle. However, this will often get countered in that scenario. On the bottom lane, if we're continuing with the try versus try lane scenario, this ward was, will be incredibly use useful. You're generally going to be farming down here and have your supports playing around this area in the jungle trying to pull, and this will allow you to see the enemy supports rotating around. The same kind of logic is why you would often 
want to place a ward here, somewhere on this lane, so that you get to see what's going on in the lane and you don't get caught by surprise. And finally, if the enemy is playing a solo hero off lane, down here at the bottom lane, generally an aggressive ward out here on the lane that gives vision all the way to the tower so you see the TPs coming in, you can even place it more aggressively like this. Sees all the way behind, sees the TPs, sees any sort of movement he tries to make, and gives you the dominance in the bottom lane. Now, we're going to move up now, because now we're going to focus on what happens when we advance in the game. The most important thing about warding is you always ward for the scenario you're in. If you're dominating, you ward aggressively. If you're being dominated, you ward passively. We're going to focus on the aggressive wards now, where if we're dominating, we want to ward behind their towers. I'm going to blink away so these creeps don't go. Sorry, that was malplaced. It needs to be here. If this tower has fallen, or if you're aiming to siege it, getting this ward in can be really useful. It sees this entire area, making it hard for the enemy to defend. And if you have taken this tower, it provides you vision to prepare for the tier 2 bottom, because you have a lot of vision in the area and see down to the tower. Other wards that are relevant here if you've taken the tier 1 bottom would be this one, which gives you vision all the way down to the ancient camp, as well as up to the secret shop, and this one, which disallows the enemy from advancing down towards this area without getting caught. Now while we're already in this area, I want to show you one more ward, because if you've taken the tier 2 tower, this ward is going to be incredibly useful. Now the tower is going to destroy it because it's in range, but if you imagine the tower isn't here, you get a lot of vision up in this area, effectively completely dominating the bottom lane. Now let's also quickly place this ward, which it can be useful sometimes for Roshan scenarios. In the mid lane, same kind of logic, if we've taken the tier 1 tower, we want to exert our dominance by placing aggressive warding, so one here that gives you dominance around the mid area, you can even place it closer if you want. And the same logic for this ward, if you want to siege the tier 2, this ward can be really useful, it gives vision down here and in here, making it hard for the enemy to take you by surprise. And finally, if you manage to bring down this tier 2 tower, or you get the option to go in here, a ward in here can be really, really strong. It gives you all the vision in the world in this area and covers the tier 2 mid so you get the ability to siege. If this tower is taken down, you have a lot of vision in the area still. This ward is great when you're dominating. Let's move a little bit into the jungle. Now, we want to dominate the enemy jungle. This ward will give vision in there, but you can place it even more aggressively, such as here, which gives vision down the jungle. Generally, this area is going to get counter warded a lot, so there are some better alternatives. Uh, in those scenarios. One here will not get counter warded so often and will give you vision of this camp as well as this camp. So you get to see a lot of farming going on if the enemy tries to find the jungle or any sort of rotation where they cross through the area. The, a very common ward to place aggressively if you want to dominate the enemy jungle is this one as well, but since that will often get counter warded by a sentry, alternatives such as one down here, which will be outside the range of a sentry placed up here, or one up here could be really useful to guarding this area and kind of cornering the enemy inside their base. Yes. A final few wards I'm going to show you before this very short guide ends will be one up here, for example, between the top tier 1 and tier 2 towers, which will give you great vision to see movement, and even closer here for sieging the tier 2 tower, now you see the tower and any TPs coming in. Remember, this was a guide to radiant warding and we've taken the aggressive standpoint, if you're in a defensive standpoint, remember you need to ward so that you get as much space as possible. If you're being dominated, get them as far out as possible to try to get you some area inside this, along this line, as much as possible, so that you can secure yourself any sort of farm that you can get by getting the wards out on places that allow you to kind of branch out from your base. You see, this is the way we locked in the enemy. This is the same kind of logic you need to apply if you want to give yourself space on your side. The aggressive wards up here will be very similar to your defensive wards down here, which will try to give you the vision you need to get out of your base. As a final comment, remember you always ward in your s situation in the game. If you're dominating, try to press the advantage as much as possible by using aggressive wards, whereas if you're suffering, Try to get as much space as you can. If you're looking for more guides of this type, check out the Razor Academy, where you can find more Dota 2 videos.